What's going on guys, Ryan with Jenna Patrol back with another video today. Today, Hot Toys, Iron Man, Mark 85. Let's open it up. That's right guys, Ryan with Jenna Patrol back. Here we go, Iron Man, Mark 85, the controversial, the most anticipated Iron Man of all time. Maybe, maybe, the Iron Diecast Mark One might be up there. Maybe one day we'll actually get that. That would be awesome. I think we will. Uh, but Mark 85 here. This is the clean version. We do have the battle damage version coming sometime in 2021. This one made it here before the end of the year for me, which is awesome because I wanted to include it in the running total. You know, try try to release my uh, top 10 of 2020 uh, list, and I didn't want to make that list without taking a look at this first. So. Uh, pretty excited about this. If you want to get this or any day one figures, you can check out Pop Collectibles. I'll put a link for them in the uh, description below. Uh, they've been super awesome. They actually shipped it, made it here in, in a week, uh, even thanks to uh, FedEx, like bouncing it around the country. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but here we go. Um, this controversial with the head, the head sculpt. I, this is the original head sculpt we're going to take a look at. And I'm super excited about it. But let's look at the packaging. It's actually look, it's quite beautiful. It's actually quite beautiful. Let's take a look at it right here. So here we go, guys. Mark 85. I love this because this like um, metallic-like finish that's got going on here, the arc reactor just bounces off the light. It's like it's almost lit up, but it's not really. It's kind of cool, right? Uh, dig this. I like this quite a lot. But there's the Avengers Endgame logo. Again, that arc reactor just bouncing like crazy. Uh, Iron Man Mark 85. Um, this is uh, diecast number D30. And uh, that's a pretty cool box. I kind of dig it. It is uh, the darker styrofoam uh, that we've been getting recently versus the light gray styrofoam. If you guys have been collecting a while, you know what I'm talking about. And then on the side, we actually have, again, a little space interstellar action going on here. MMS 528, DC30, uh, and we've got uh, Iron Man Mark 85. And then on the back, there's all our whodunits. The box art is just, it's hot toys. I mean, you know what's up with this thing. Uh, we're used to seeing awesome stuff like this, but let's go ahead and I guess open this thing up. I'm just gonna kind of put this right here, see if I can get this out. Uh, I must confess, I must confess, I've actually already opened this guy up and put all the batteries in it. And uh, no joke, it took me about 35 minutes to put batteries in this guy, so. You're welcome because I wanted to showcase it with the batteries. And let me tell you what, I, I absolutely hate putting batteries in diecast figures. But there we are, guys. Mark 85. There's a little styrofoam tray. We do have a, a uh, tray on the bottom as well. We'll take a look at that in a second. Look at all the accessories. But here we go. There is your first look at the Mark 85. Now, this. I'll just tell you right now, the gold, you guys are seeing this? We're going to compare this to some other Iron Man figures we have in the collection a little bit. Uh, but the gold off of this thing is actually quite nice. I, I uh, and You guys can make your decision whether you like this one, the Mark 50, uh, maybe even uh, the Mark 46 concept. We'll kind of take a look at a few. Um, but uh, right off the bat, I can say the, uh, the colors definitely pop off of the figure. Uh, so we do have a, a, a decent amount of accessories. I mean, it's an, it's an Iron Man figure. You're not going to get a lot. Um, but we do have the actual figure, which we'll take a, a closer look at here in a second. But just an up close and personal look at the colors. These gold and uh, a gunmetal gray. That's not silver. It's like a gunmetal gray. Uh, even throughout here, gunmetal gray uh, and everything going on here. Slight little battle damage pieces. Even though it's supposed to be clean, uh, there's definitely some battle damage going on. But we will uh, we'll take a closer look at it in just a second. Uh, we do have. Our normal hands that we get with pretty much every other Iron Man figure. Not going to spend a lot of time on these because they're pretty straightforward. These are your uh, Repulsor Blast hands. You are going to have a right and a left version of that, uh, which with a pass-through right there, so the LEDs in the arm can actually shine through there. You can have that going on. I, I use these quite a lot. I like, I like the Repulsor Blast hands. Uh, so we do have uh, a right and left version of that with a nice little gunmetal gray, a nice little glass plasticky uh, Repulsor arc reactor uh, thing going on there. Super cool pieces, actually. Uh, so we got that, and then we have a right and a left. Uh, this is your articulated hands. So you got. I, I use these more than anything, honestly, uh, in my display because I just they're really easy to go change a pose real quick. Um, but these are the articulated ones. We have a right and a left version of this, and uh, you can see right there. There's all your little knuckles. 
uh, going on with this figure. So these are super, you know, interesting, but uh, the fact that we have them is awesome. Uh, we do have this, if I can get this out of here. This is super cool. The gauntlet. Just first look at the gauntlet, guys. Whew. Yeah, we're gonna get that in a second. We're gonna have a neck brace or neck piece uh, for changing out the portrait for Tony Stark. And then we've got this piece, which uh, is gonna be difficult to get out of here. Yeah, there we go, actually got it out. And uh, there's our first look at uh, this Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, piss off the whole world portrait <laughs> that, uh, that has caused so much drama in the community lately. So, um, yeah, we're going to take a look at this, compare it to some other ones that we have in the collection as well. Uh, so I promise we're going to do that. And then underneath, we've got a tray, so much styrofoam. And uh, again, I have taken uh, some of the stuff out to put the batteries in the uh, figure to save time. Because if I started recording this and spent 35 minutes messing with batteries, I'd be really annoyed. Uh, but here's our diorama base. We got an Avengers Endgame. I really like this little paint app they got going on here. Kind of dig that. So uh, I'm down with that. The Avengers logo here, the arc reactor going there, Avengers Endgame there, and then Iron Man on the bottom. I don't spend a lot of time on these because it's just eh, it's just a stand. Uh, dynamic stand right here. Crotch grabber. Now this I don't like. Okay, I don't like. It. We saw with the recent spider-man figures the iron spider and the stealth suit spider night monkey um we saw a different crotch grabber and one where they actually didn't just have this back plate that had an under under uh, support for the crotch crotch i much prefer that so i may even instead of using this one that comes with this particular figure i may grab one of the spider-man ones that have that crotch under piece to support this figure a little better so i'm hoping they really uh will add that for the the battle damage version when we get that because i think those work rather well uh, but we do have that so that's fine we get a bunch of batteries this is how many batteries are in this thing and they were a nightmare specifically the ones in the legs were just terrible uh to mess with and it's not the actual batteries it's the compartments you got to get the little flaps open to get to the batteries um, but there you go you get a pile of batteries and then you've got this piece this refocuser i believe is what they're calling it this thing is absolutely huge absolutely huge but the paint apps on it are beautiful absolutely beautiful look at this thing it's huge. like there's my hand it's you know i don't have giant hands but it's still that's pretty good size uh, but there it is guys the refocuser and it is pretty freaking sick look at the light uh, i'm pretty sure this is where uh, thor came up hit that with his hammer and then it went all kind of crazy uh there's the back side of it these i've i've seen some people use like a uv light on these silver sections it gives a little bit of glow it does not light up it's not part of the led functions at all it's certainly not connected in any way to do that but um that's kind of a cool trick if uh, if it in fact does that i uh probably won't mess with that because honestly uv effects in the display are just pretty much useless to me uh, but yeah what do you guys think of that pretty cool all right so let's get this out of here and let's take a look at this figure I suppose we should take a close look at the portrait because that's what everybody's going to be wanting to be uh, interested in before we can get to the actual awesome part of the figure. Uh, but this is the Mark 85 original, well, I guess the original release, the day one release uh, portrait that we're getting. Um, and right off, I, I can see, like, the initial thoughts are it's not 100%. So I get why people are upset with this. I get why people are disappointed. Um, it's not 100% uh, for a Robert Downey Jr. or Tony Stark. Uh, it's not that, but it's not all that bad at some angles. I mean, right here, yeah, not so not so great straight on. It's it's not so great, and I think the nose is what's like. It's very thin. It's thinner down at the the jawline. Uh, when we look at the Mark uh, 47 and Mark 50 here in just, just a second, uh, it's a little thinner at the jawline. But I mean, this is uh, some decent lighting going on here. I mean, I could put it just straight flat lighting, and it would be you know it'd be okay but uh, this is this is not bad um but there we are like this angle right here yeah it's you almost got to get it kind of right about there i think to get it right so you know right off the just first impressions of this thing like i like the light gray uh hair they got going on here the i don't say dirty blonde hair they've got going on here is definitely lighter than uh we've seen in previous figures where some of the other figures were just straight up like black paint black uh black hair uh, but he definitely had some uh, more coloring going on the actual paint apps on the skin are nice uh the beard's nice 
Uh, I think I think that's fine. The eyes are fine. I'm, I'm appreciative that the eyes are actually looking straight ahead versus uh, off to the side like we're going to see here in just a second. Um, but what are your guys' thoughts? What do you, what do you think? Like there is an up-close, high-def uh, look at this portrait. And uh, I think like right there, I can see it. Right there, not so much. But right there... So I, it, I guess it depends on how you display your figures. Um, I am 100% won't be displaying my Iron Man figure with this portrait, which is why I have all of my other Robert Downey Jr. portraits uh, in Ziploc bags because I don't use them. Take a look at the Mark 85 and the Mark 50. Here we got this going on. This is much darker here, which I was telling you about earlier. And you see down at the bottom, the jaw, the back jawline, this one's got a more, uh, more width to it than this guy. This one's definitely more skinny, which makes sense because in uh, Endgame, he had lost some weight, even at the beginning of the film. And, and even as he added some weight later, you know, over time, uh, he still wasn't quite at this, you know, weight yet. Uh, but he did look pretty good. If you go back to the uh, the time heist, he's definitely skinnier than this. Like this is this is more hefty. Um, I, I'm not going to say this one's not 100 uh, percent Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark either. This one's this one's not there. It's pretty good. You know we, we're very happy with this one. Uh, but this one's nowhere. I mean it's not a a closer representation than Robert Downey Jr. than this one is they're both off right they're both off so you can see the different paint apps that the hairstyle is the bigger one i think uh he definitely had this hairstyle not this one so if we got this hairstyle uh it wouldn't really be screen accurate either but i know some people would like to have that so uh, there's that then i also have i can grab it over here i actually have the mark 47 uh let's see here the mark 47 is actually very similar i'll put it all the way on the side the mark 47 to your far right um, but the Mark 47 is looking off to the side, which I hate. You can see your eggs like, you look at, like, what are you looking at, dude? You're looking over there. Um, but, uh, there it is. So you've got the Mark 85 on the left, Mark 50 in the middle, Mark 47 on the right. Darker hair here, more light here. And then he got like, got almost blonde in this one with the gray highlights. Uh, what, what do you guys think? What's your thoughts on this? Uh, which one is, uh, your preference? I'd like to know that and you can let me know down below uh, just play nice in the comment section don't go crazy if you just really don't like this that's okay you can you can say that but um but yeah it's it's, it's not uh, none of these are 100 percent robert downey jr they're pretty good but they're not 100 percent so um if you happen to have wanted this one you're gonna have to get one of those day one releases uh pop collectible still has a few left uh, I think he's pretty much sold most of them uh, if you want this one. If you're going to wait on a batch from Sideshow to get over, they're going to get the later batches. Most likely, and it has not been 100% confirmed, but most likely you're going to be getting uh, this, this guy right here, this Mark 50 uh, portrait. And it got delayed to Q3 of 2021. So, you know, what's the deal? You, you get this one and you can have your figure now, or you wait uh, three, six months, eight months, nine months, whenever they actually get around to getting it. If it's Q3 in Hong Kong, does that mean we're going to be Q4 United States? So it might be a whole nother year to get this portrait. So what I would say is go ahead and get this. If you really don't like this, you can pick up a Mark 50 portrait fairly easy because the Mark 50 is not trading at a super high price right now. Um, so I like this one and I'm not going to be exchanging it. I'm going to keep it. Uh, and like I said, I never display any of these anyway, so what difference does it make? Let's take a look at this figure itself because I'm actually shocked by this. Like, I, I knew I wanted the Mark 85. It's in-game. It's, it's, you know, Tony's last hurrah. And uh, I, I knew I wanted this, but I was a little disappointed in the Mark 50. So I was really uh, apprehensive about the Mark 85. Uh, the Mark 50 just, you know, I, I enjoyed it when I first got it. Spent some time with it. And over time, I just like, ah. Oh. Man, so much red. Like, give me some gold. Uh, and then the Mark 85, they were like, here, have, have, have some gold. So uh, I was pretty happy with that. But looking at the uh, the head sculpt on this thing, it's it's what you would expect from Iron Man. It is what it is. It's pretty cool. Uh, there are some, uh, are some slight battle damage pieces going on uh, right along there. We've got some scratches and whatnot uh, along the jaw. And uh, they're pretty pretty good looking there i do like like i said earlier i do like the gunmetal gray going along the sides down in the shoulders you've got uh, some battle damage going on there as well and uh, overall just a beautiful beautiful piece battle damage pieces going on here it's hefty like it's 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 a proper die cast iron man the mark 50 felt more like and i, I guess i could weigh it and figure out the difference but the mark 50 felt not as substantial uh in hand 
and maybe I'm just crazy, but it, that's just what I thought. Uh, I really like, I really like uh, the gold. It makes the arms seem so bulky, and I think the arms actually are larger. Uh, I think they actually are larger. Um, I kind of dig those. Uh, they're they're just a little more bulky, and when you bend those arms, you get this nice little flip out piece that we saw in the Mark 50 that kind of gets that out of the way, so we can get a nice bend. Uh, and that's a nice little touch that we get uh, carry over from the Mark 50. Uh, otherwise, may, we might lose some of that range of motion. So that's pretty nice. You get that going on back down there, and you just put this back, and um, and, uh, and it's not bad. So yeah, there we go. Right, but so it looks it looks good. I kind of dig that. The red, uh, we'll compare it to the Mark 50, 46, and some other ones maybe a, a little later in the video. Uh, the red looks nice. Uh, this this reminds me of a classic comic Iron Man. And I think that's what I really like about this one with all the gold, uh, the armor on, on the arms and the gold on the legs. Um, I, think that's, I think that's really what I like the most about it is it reminds me of just classic Iron Man. I would have loved if they used the, um, the triangle arc reactor. That would have been nice. That would have been cool. Uh, versus this little trapezoid thing. Uh, this piece um, is pretty nice. This piece comes off. It's nothing really super exciting underneath, uh, but you can take this off. Let's see if I can get this off of here without breaking too much stuff here. Um, but it's um, just your normal. Okay, well maybe I can't. <clears throat> you can take this piece off right here if you want. Which I don't know why you would, but there you go. Normal stuff we're seeing with Iron Man figures. We've been seeing this for a very long time. There's your arc reactor, which is actually a triangle. And then they make this, so that would have been way cooler, I think. I don't know. I know it's screen accurate, but it is what it is. Um, we do have a drop down in the torso. Oh, I just knocked that part off because, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, we do have a drop down in the torso so we can get some more range of motion out of this thing. You can see all the little details going on. All the little, that's just beautiful, man. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, not a bad range of motion, actually. And you guys know me, I like to pose crap out of my figures, so we're gonna definitely have some fun with this. Ab crunch, uh, you, and never really get a decent ab crunch out of an Iron Man figure, uh, but yeah, going backwards, usually we get a little bit more. Yeah, so we get a little bit more going backwards. Oh, get out of here, man. Um, so that's not bad, but it's nice that you got these little flaps and stuff to kind of get out of the way uh, if you want to. If you want to extend that torso down while you're doing a little bit more uh, range of motion this way, that's what you got to do. Otherwise, uh, you won't have that much motion. And you just pop it back down here. And if you do this, you don't really have a whole lot. So uh, that's nice, solid engineering uh, on Hot Toys part. So they did a really good job there. Uh, the legs are, are just as nice. Uh, you do have, if I can get his arm out of the way, you do have these little flaps. There's two flaps there. Um, there's two flaps there to get that out of the way so you can move the leg wherever you want, up, down, out, wherever. Uh, it is a drop leg, so you can get this going here. And this one was a little difficult the first time I did it. There it goes. You hear that little snap. And uh, you can get this going wherever. You definitely want to move these out of the way before you move in this. Be careful of that. You don't want to uh, scratch your paint. Uh, but there is a thigh swivel, as you can see right there. Of course, it goes out fairly far. That's pretty ridiculous. Like Iron Man wouldn't really... I don't, I don't even think I can move that far. Um, but that's a nice little thigh swivel. Double bend on the knee. So you can get plenty of range of motion out of that. And then you get these little uh, toe articulation pieces uh, that kind of pop up and uh, move out of the way. So you can do whatever you want with that. Um, but I, I really, um, I like the colors on this thing. But I think the main... The main thing that's going to work or, or, or kind of be a, the, the deal breaker for me or, or what's going to be, uh, you know, kind of the rating system on this thing is what does it look like posed? So I think what we're going to do, we're going to break out the Mark 50 and we'll look at it with the portraits on there and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to, since this is already off, I'll turn on some lights and let you see all the lights. There are piles of lights. There is a uh, battery department behind the uh, tricep on both sides, one in the back, uh, which is actually how you change this out this little panel here pops off you can put that on there and then there's a thigh uh, battery compartment on both sides and then you actually have these little flaps um, these little flaps here um, actually uh, 
there i you know if you're gonna i it's just a cool touch from uh, hot toys to do that so uh let me go ahead turn all the lights on have some fun with this we'll absolutely kill the batteries because the batteries never last long anyways and uh let's pose this guy up all right so i've got all the lights off i thought you guys might want to see this so as much time as i took to put the batteries in i had to take all the panels off and put them back on flip all the switches and here we go so we do have I've got the nano gauntlet on him, so we'll take a closer look at that in just a second. Uh, but I was going to give you guys an idea of what all the lights are going on with this figure, uh, with you know, if, depending on if you actually want to use them. So obviously we've got some up in the head sculpt, we've got some in the back, and then we've got them going down the torso and the legs. And um, there's not a whole lot going on down in the feet, so not a lot going on down there. But upper top. We've got them again, just in the torso. And of course, obviously we've got the repulsor blast hands going on and then the head sculpt, but there is a, uh, the, the nano gauntlet coming around. So you guys can get a close up look at kind of what's going on. It actually surprisingly is pretty bright uh, for, you know, a battery operated deal. Uh, but there is, <laughs> there's your nano gauntlet coming around. Check that thing out. That's pretty sick. That's not bad all lit up, honestly. It's not bad at all. So uh, I'm probably not gonna have mine lit up because it's just a pain to deal with. Uh, might look into some, um, you know, just some, like a fusion reactor deal to just have them light up all the time. But uh, that's what it looks like with it lit up. If I zoom this thing out here just a second and we flip the switch, we should have some light. So uh, there you go. So again, the colors on this look pretty sick. The gold, the red, uh, even with the LEDs going on, whether or not you have the LEDs on or off, I don't think really makes uh, too much of a difference on a display. Um, but just looking at this, you guys can let me know your thoughts on, uh, number one, the pose. Like, it's a simple pose. There's nothing crazy going on here. But what are your thoughts on the colors and everything that's going on here? I think it actually, I think it works. I think it works. Um, there's that gauntlet close-up again. I like this better than the 50. I think it's because of the gold. We'll, we'll put the 50 up here in just a second. Uh, we'll change up the pose and we'll look at both portraits and kind of go from there. Um, but I really do like this one better than uh, the 50 purely because of the gold. And um, yeah, so let's uh, let's get it out here and see what it looks like together. All right, guys, so I've got the Mark 85 up here with the portrait on it. And then I also put the Mark 50 up here with the portrait on it. I did not bother to turn on the lights for the Mark 50 because quite honestly, I couldn't remember where all the freaking panels were to flip the switches. Um, but yeah, that regardless, uh, let's take a look at these portraits. Uh, so again, the Mark 50, uh, again, it's not, um, not 100%. Not 100% there for uh, Tony Stark, but it's pretty flipping good. I mean, it really is. Uh, I did, for fun, I did break out my uh, scale, and I did weigh the Mark 50 and um, uh, the Mark 85. And I was 100% right. The Mark 85 is substantially heavier than the Mark 50. Look at this portrait, guys. There it is in, in some decent light. You guys can let me know what your thoughts are. It's um, It's interesting. I'm not going to display my own that portrait, but you know, I can, I can see where some people might be upset. Um, I still don't think that gives anybody the right to go out there and just be total jerks. Um, but, um, uh, you know, you get the idea, but what are your thoughts on these two side by side? Uh, am I crazy thinking that the gold is just way cooler than all the red? Um, I, I, I quite like it. I like all the gold. Um, so I having some fun with this, uh, like I said earlier, uh, with the, uh, weighing the two, the Mark 85 is 120 grams heavier than the Mark 50. That's crazy. That's a substantial, that's like a third heavier uh, than uh, almost a third, and maybe a, maybe 25% heavier than the Mark 50. So it is definitely a beast of a figure, and it's bulky. You can see the shoulders. He didn't ship, uh, he didn't skip shoulder day, he didn't skip back day on the Mark 85. And uh, you can see like just the difference in colors. Look at those. The 85 is definitely going to pop off of the shelf more than the 50. Now, I mean, the 50 is a bad figure. It's just you got to have a preference, and I like, I just like the gold. Um, but I am curious how the Mark 85 is going to stack up next to the Mark 46 concept, because you guys know that's my favorite uh, Iron Man suit. Uh, but we'll see how it looks uh, next to that. But um, yeah, those colors are just, they're just cool. All right, guys, here's a close up look at this uh, backpack, if you will. You guys will see some up close details in the lighting. It's actually quite nice. The only problem I have with this, and I really don't like the, the base on this, the crotch grabber. It's not even a crotch grabber, it's a waist grabber. 
um, on this figure is because it doesn't really grab it at a at a good spot. There's, on an Iron Man figure, it's not really the best locations, um, but that's where it actually grabs it. And it's it's uh it's it's kind of loose. It's kind of loose. It's not a big. I'm not a big fan of that. But there it is. It actually looks pretty nice on the figure. I probably wouldn't have mine in a flight pose. It is like I said, it's heavy. Uh, it's actually quite heavy uh, for this. So probably this guy's probably going to end up on the ground just for safety purposes in the display case. I've got other Iron Man figures flying, and so I don't need them all flying. Uh, but that actually is a pretty nice little piece right there. I will probably use this. The um, the accessory that came with the Mark 50, I really hate that piece. It falls off quite a bit. This one appears to be solid. It doesn't feel like it wants to pop off uh, just by twisting or anything like that. So I think it's going to be pretty nice. Probably going to display mine with the Nano Gauntlet because why not? I mean, that's just cool. Uh, but... This Mark 50 is pretty flippin' beautiful. All right, guys, so I wanted to leave the Mark 50 up there, uh, and I just added the Mark 46. I did change out the head sculpt on the 85 for the helmeted version, because honestly, that's what I'm gonna be using. Uh, but here it is, there's the Mark 46 concept. You guys that slept on this one, man, I, I, I feel bad for you because it's just flippin' beautiful. Uh, but I think the 46 concept's got a lot in common uh, with that 85 right there. It's, um, it's, it's got a lot in common with it. So I really like this. So I think, oh man, this is hard for me to choose. Uh, by the way, there's a new pose for the uh, for the 85 for you guys. You got a little double uh, repulsor blast. And I've left the batteries, uh, uh, the lights on the entire time. So they are definitely starting to dim uh, on the 85. But there it is. And then there's the Mark 50 portrait. Uh, you guys can... Uh, See for yourself and see which one you know you like. I, I, the Mark Fifty Portrait is better. I mean, I'm, it just it just is. It's just not as screen accurate as the the one for the eighty five. Um, but uh, again, there's the forty six. What an awesome set. Um, but what I was going to say about the uh, uh, the uh, the fifty is it, it the fifty is a beautiful piece. The the eighty five is definitely my is definitely my preference uh, for the gold. The Mark 46 versus the Mark 85. Oh man, um, size wise and bulk wise, the 85 takes the cake. And that's that's saying a lot coming from me because I flipping love the 46 concept, but I think the 85 is a better looking figure. Uh, it's a better proportioned figure. Uh, the paint, the colors, the, uh, the 85's got a deeper gold uh, versus that matte gold we're seeing on the 46 concept. Uh, the colors on all three are they're very similar. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of change going on there. Um, but the proportions, I mean, look at the back of the 85. It is huge, those shoulders. Absolutely huge. And when he swings around here, you'll be able to see it, the width in it. Um, I think it's just, I don't know. Uh, it makes me ever so more excited for the Battle Damage 85, which I think they're gonna just absolutely knock out of the park. That thing is just gorgeous. And there's the 50 portrait coming around, I guess. Um, again, that 50 portrait is not bad. So I guess what I would say on this, um, I think, and I said this in a, a video for Six Skill News, I think, recently, the, the 85 with the original day one portrait is going to be rare. It's not going to be easy to find, even though um, maybe some, maybe nobody wants to find it. I don't know. Um, but to get a Mark 50 portrait, you can get those all day long. I mean, you can get it. If you want to use it, you already have a Mark 50, or maybe you've got a Mark 46 or 47, those both will work. You're not going to have any issues with that. Um, but they're just not as screen accurate as uh, the one from the 85. It just may be your preference. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. I'm definitely gonna have some poses and uh, have some have some fun with um, all these figures. I, I'm building a nice little Iron Man display right now. Still waiting on Mark Seven. Still waiting on Mark Seven. Maybe one day it'll actually show up. Um, but I'm enjoying this. I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, and down in the comment section, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. What are you waiting on? Um, it's a nice, good place to be. Also, check out the Facebook group, Jedi's Patrol, down below. There's a link for all that stuff. And if you want to get day one pre-orders, day one order releases, there are some awesome figures coming out very soon, which, honestly, 
I'm super excited about even more than the Mark 85 here. Uh, we've got the Heavy Mando going to be releasing very soon. Maybe even by the time you're watching this video. I don't know. Um, but the Heavy Mando is going to be sick. We're definitely going to have that one coming in. I do have the 40th anniversary Boba Fett on the way. I got Death Trooper on the way. And obviously there's more Marvel stuff coming. So uh, stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the button. Hit the bell notification and hit the thumbs up button as well. So the more people that hit the thumbs up button, I think the batteries in the Iron Man figures last longer. I think that's science. So as always, guys, collect what you like. We'll see you next time.